Hello, and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver, and I'm a scientist, and just wandering out of camera shot is Cindy Oliver, and she's a dog. The COVID pandemic has been a nightmare for anti-vaxxers. A lot of people who aren't old enough to remember that people used to die from vaccine-preventable diseases have in real time seen the difference a vaccine can make. This has left anti-vaxxers with a huge problem. So they have attempted to fix it in the only way they know how, by making stuff up. And what they have made up is that vaccines are causing excess deaths. In this video, we'll be looking at a number of the reasons why we know these claims are lies. Some of the reasons I have covered previously and some I haven't, but I thought it would be good to put them all together into one video. The first reason is that ONS data shows that mortality is actually higher in the unvaccinated, which is the exact opposite of what we would expect if vaccines were causing excess mortality. Data on mortality by vaccination status is available for England on this ONS website. The information is available in an Excel spreadsheet, but I've pulled out the main numbers and put them onto a PowerPoint slide to make them easier to read. This table shows the age standardised mortality rates for deaths by vaccination status in England. And the data includes all deaths occurring between the 1st of January 2021 and the 31st of May 2022. And just to be clear, when they say vaccinated, that is any number of vaccines at any time. So in this data set, you are considered vaccinated as soon as you get your first vaccine. It is not a certain number of weeks after your vaccine, which some people seem to think. That definition is sometimes used when assessing efficacy of vaccines, but it is never used when assessing safety. So when we look at deaths from all causes, we see the age standardised mortality rate for vaccinated people is 957.4 per 100,000 person years compared with 2,337.5 for the unvaccinated. So obviously the unvaccinated are much more likely to die than the vaccinated. However, this does include COVID deaths, so maybe it isn't a fair comparison because we know that the COVID vaccine is going to reduce COVID deaths. At least most people know that. So let's have a look at non-COVID mortality. Here we see that the age standardised mortality rate is 892.9 per 100,000 person years for the vaccinated compared with 1,474.3 for the unvaccinated. So even when we are just looking at non-COVID deaths, the unvaccinated are still more likely to die, which of course is the exact opposite of what you would expect to see if the vaccines were in fact leading to excess mortality. And for completeness, these are the mortality rates for deaths involving COVID. Unsurprisingly, they are considerably higher in the unvaccinated at 863.2 per 100,000 person years than the vaccinated at 64.5. So that's the data for England, but maybe England is an outlier. No, they're not, which brings me to reason two. A US study shows that non-COVID mortality is lower following COVID vaccination across all age groups. 
So this is a study. It's entitled COVID Vaccination and Non-COVID Mortality Risk, Seven Integrated Healthcare Organisations, United States, December 14, 2020 to July 31, 2021. And what they did in this study is they compared non-COVID mortality following either first or second doses of the Pfizer, Moderna or Janssen COVID vaccines with a matched cohort who weren't vaccinated. And non-COVID deaths were defined as deaths that did not occur within 30 days of a COVID diagnosis or a positive test result for SARS-CoV-2. And this table here shows the results. It shows the relative risk for non-COVID mortality of COVID vaccine recipients compared with unvaccinated comparison groups. So if the risk is below one, it means that mortality is lower in the vaccine group. And if the risk is above one, it means that the risk is higher in the vaccine group. And as you can see, for all age groups, your risk of dying from non-COVID causes is lower if you are vaccinated. Although in the case of those aged 12 to 17, the difference is not statistically significant because mortality is low overall in this age group. They also analysed the data by sex and race. And again, COVID vaccination was associated with lower non-COVID mortality, which is, again, the exact opposite of what you would expect if vaccines were associated with excess mortality. Now, the third reason that we know that vaccine excess death claims are lies is because excess mortality is higher in US states with low vaccination rates than in US states with high vaccination rates. This information comes from this study here, where they compared excess mortality rates in the 10 most highly vaccinated US states with those in the 10 least vaccinated states from the 27th of June 2021 until the 26th of March 2022. The 10 most vaccinated states were Vermont, Rhode Island, Maine, Connecticut, Hawaii, Massachusetts, New York, Maryland, New Jersey, and District of Columbia. The 10 least vaccinated states were Indiana, North Dakota, Tennessee, Arkansas, Georgia, Idaho, Louisiana, Mississippi, Wyoming, and Alabama. And apologies to anyone who lives in any of those states if I haven't actually pronounced your state correctly. And these are the results here. In the 10 most vaccinated states, which have an average vaccination rate of 73%, the excess mortality was 65.1 per 100,000. Whereas for the 10 least vaccinated states, it is 193.3 per 100,000, which is almost three times as much. They also compared the mortality rate with 20 OECD countries with 2021 population exceeding 5 million and greater than 25,000 per capita gross domestic product. And they found that the highly vaccinated US states had similar mortality to the 20 other OECD countries, but the least vaccinated US states had much higher mortality. Now, it's important to mention that there were some limitations to the study. The data wasn't adjusted for age and comorbidities, and the excess mortality data wasn't adjusted for population changes. And this brings me to the fourth reason that we know that vaccine excess death claims are lies. And that is that anti-vaxxers are exaggerating excess death statistics. And this is an example of how they do just that. Specifically, anti-vaxxers are claiming that Australia has 17% 
excess mortality this year and suggesting that the vaccines are a major cause of this. However, Australian Bureau of Statistics doesn't say Australia has 17% excess deaths. They say that the deaths are 17% above the historical average, which is not the same thing. And this is clearly explained by the ABS, who state the following. While this publication can provide an indication of where counts of deaths are above or below expectations, it does not provide official estimates of excess mortality. Using the number of deaths from the previous years as the predictor for the expected number of deaths does not take into account changes in population size and age structures of that population, as well as expected improvements in mortality rates over time. Age standardised death rates can be accessed by the data downloads tab in this publication. And I have accessed the age standardised death rates via the data downloads tab. They are in an Excel spreadsheet, but I have calculated the average monthly rate and put them into a pretty table to make them easier to see. So this is the average age standardised monthly death rate for January to August 2022, compared with the baseline average. The rate is per 100,000 and the numbers in brackets are the 95% confidence intervals. We can see that the age standardised death rate has increased from 36.932 to 39.762. And the confidence intervals don't overlap, so that increase is statistically significant. Numerically, that increase is 2.83, which is a percentage increase of 7.7% which is considerably less than the 17% excess deaths being claimed by anti-vaxxers. But this is still a substantial number. So what is causing the increase in mortality? Unsurprisingly, most of them are actually COVID-related. The age standardised death rate for COVID deaths was 2.633 which accounts for 93% of the excess mortality. And unlike a lot of other countries, Australia had very few COVID deaths in 2020 and most of 2021. And that's because we kept our borders closed. So we are only now starting to see significant COVID mortality. But as you can see, our total COVID mortality is still much lower than many countries. Also important is what causes of death haven't increased. Respiratory diseases, cancer, ischemic heart diseases and cerebrovascular diseases have all decreased compared with baseline, although the decreases are not statistically significant. And why this is important is because Anti-vaxxers like to claim that vaccines are causing increases in cancer, heart attacks and strokes. If this was the case, we would be seeing increases in highly vaccinated Australia. But we are not. Of course, another big claim of anti-vaxxers is that vaccines are causing excess mortality in young people. And this brings me to the fifth reason that we know anti-vaxxers are lying. There has been no increase in mortality in young people in highly vaccinated Australia. This figure shows deaths in January to August 2022 compared with the baseline average. As you can see, in the 0 to 44 age group, there is no increase in mortality in highly vaccinated Australia. And when I say highly vaccinated, 97.3% of people over 16 in Australia have received at least one dose of a COVID vaccine and 61% of people age 5 to 15 also have. Of course, anti-vaxxers don't just stop at vague claims of 
vaccine-associated deaths. Pretty much every time someone dies, they jump on it like leeches and falsely claim the death was caused by the vaccine. And this brings me to reason number six that we know that anti-vaxxers are lying. Anti-vaxxers are falsely attributing deaths to vaccines when the causes are known to be non-vaccine related. There are numerous examples of this, but I will just show you a few. In this tweet, Dr. Asim Malhotra shares a video that features himself as well as a number of people who have recently died in an attempt to link the deaths to vaccination. Included is the young lady pictured here who actually died from COVID complications before she was able to be vaccinated. And the Died Suddenly Twitter account recently shared this photo of a young boy who sadly died. He died on the 22nd of April 2021 from a sudden cardiac death as a result of an undetected heart abnormality. The vaccine was not even approved by the FDA for his age group until after his death. This is one of many entries on the Good Science Inc. website. They claim this police officer and former football player died suddenly. In fact, he died of a fentanyl overdose. Now, the final reason we know that excess mortality isn't related to vaccines is because history tells us there is a another more obvious reason. History tells us that previous influenza epidemics led to increases in excess mortality from causes other than influenza and pneumonia. This paper was published in 1932, a little while ago, and also it was before vaccines were available for influenza. And it looked at a number of epidemics over a period of 15 years. And what the author found was that in every case, the excess mortality from all causes was appreciably higher than the excess mortality credited to influenza and pneumonia. So it's hardly surprising that we are seeing the same thing now with a new virus. So that's seven reasons that we know anti-vaxxers are lying when they claim that vaccines are related to excess mortality. There are many more, but I thought that seven was enough. So if you hear anyone making this claim, please share this video with them. If you'd like to look further into the data that I've presented, I've provided links in the video's description. And please remember this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. If you've got this far, thank you for listening. And if you've liked or commented on the video, double thank you, because that means that more people will see the video because the algorithm likes it for some reason. And of course, thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee. I really appreciate your support. I will be making more videos about the science in the future, so if you'd like to see them, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.